It can be really scary cutting back on fertilizer as the Jorgensen's have done. And most people would legitimately ask, how long can you keep this up? Yeah, and in fact, many people have expressed concern that Brian is actually mining his soils. This video opens the possibility that in a living, healthy soil, plants can access pools of nutrient that don't necessarily appear in the soil test value. Pay attention to where Brian begins this story. So I want to take you back, uh, you know, we implemented 100% no-till in the 1990s, 1991, and our yields were steadily increasing to a point where they kind of seemed to, to level off and somehow cap. And it felt, I felt as if there was something missing. And at that time, we were still soil testing and using soil lab recommendations or university recommendations to, you know, we were doing maintenance level of phosphate. We're high levels of potassium here, so potassium applications were never, never really done. So we were, you know, basically looking at N and P and not looking at any, any micros or anything else. And I felt as if there had to be a better way. And I came upon some technology in the mid-1990s through a company that taught us a different approach. It was a different paradigm of thinking. And we have basically been employing those, those methodologies since the mid-1990s. So going back to 1995, we basically jumped out full force and said, okay, we're going to set up our planter to do the applications of these nutrients. We're going to stop dry uh, applications of dry phosphate on the surface. We're only going to use high quality phosphates in furrow. And we have been doing that since the mid 1990s. So ostensibly we stopped applying any phosphate from a large degree on the surface of the soil. And we're only putting small amounts of available P at seeding time. And since that period of time, which would be basically 22 years ago, our P levels in our soil, soil test P levels, have come down. But they've come down to a point where it would be very uncomfortable for most people in that science. They would look at those and say, oh my God, you are destined to fail. You're going to have a severe crop failure here. And yet, Buzz, every year we do this. We never see a deficiency. We never have problems with the plants with energy levels or phosphate deficiencies. Somehow or another, the plants seem to survive on those small amounts of, of nutrient. And so we don't get scared about the soil tests anymore. If you look at the native prairie systems and take soil assays of them, you're going to find very similar numbers, very low phosphate levels. Mother Nature has a system in place and it works very well. Now notice that Brian always goes back to where their journey started and that's no-till. Stay with us for our final video in this case study where Nick talks about what soil building, which began with no-till, has done over the last 15 years. See you soon.